In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this reflective 3D room animation in After Effects. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. I recently saw this by 2D Pete, who despite his name works primarily in Cinema 4D. And after staring transfixed at it for, well, I'm not quite sure, time kind of lost all meaning. Maybe four or five hours? I wondered if it was possible to recreate it in After Effects. You should definitely follow Pete on Instagram. He's a creative genius. I am a hack, making half assed versions of great motion graphics in After Effects. In this video, we'll look at building a 3D room, importing a camera path from Illustrator, reflections, and camera stuff. The good thing about this exercise is once you've set up your environment, it's super easy to swap out the content for say, clips of your work, or kinetic type, or random clips from Bill Murray films. Run it please. Oh wait, before we start, you can view the entire workflow for this animation on my sister channel, The Video Shop Longplay. And there's the project file you can download for free on Gumroad. Links are both in the description below. The creation of the geometric shapes animation I've covered in a previous tutorial and the link for that's below. Will you run it please? Okay, let's get started. Create a new composition. 1000 by 1000 pixels and 24 frames a second. Duration, let's make this a minute. We're using classic 3D renderer. And we'll call this panel. And create another comp. 1920, 1080, same frame rate duration. And we're gonna use Cinema 4D renderer and we'll call this room. Bring it our panel into the room comp and make it a 3D layer by checking this. To make building the room easier, what we're going to do is press P for position and reset the position values to be zero. I'm going to go to two views. So on the right, we've got the active camera or default view. We haven't got any camera. On the left, we've got top view. I'm going to press R for rotation, give it X value of minus 90. So we're looking down onto our first floor panel and press enter. Rename this floor 01 and we start building our room. Just duplicate that layer and press P and put in a value of say 1000 on the X and duplicate again and drag them up here and then just fine tune that. Now at this point, what would be handy is to have something in this comp that we can see. You're gonna have your own stuff in here. It's gonna be footage or graphics or text or whatever. Whatever. But just while we're building it, let's put a text in. Doesn't matter what it says, could just say text. Now we can just see what we're doing. This is the view from the top. We're going to make a wall panel. So we'll call this wall. Maybe even give it a different layer group color if you want. And then the rotation of this, we're going to set the X to zero and then the Y to 90. Just from here, switch from top to custom view. And then drag the Z out. So obviously having the having these panels one thousand by one thousand makes this part a lot easier. Minus five hundred. And then if you're creating pillars, you can just duplicate and then press half rotation. Don't mess with these values, but you can change the orientation here. So 
say 217. And then you just want to bring it out. So in true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. Um, anyone outside the UK, no idea what Blue Peter is. Probably anyone under 30, no idea what Blue Peter is. <laughs> so we've got a figure of eight room here with two pillars. So an exact recreation of the 2D Pete animation. Uh, later on, I'm going to extend this out so the room is slightly bigger, but for now, we'll keep the, the figure of eight thing going on. We're going to add a camera, Control alt shift c going to use the 15mm preset to give us that nice wide angle lens distortion, and OK that. And so here, we've got our active camera, and our camera's at the bottom here. And we're going to go into Illustrator. What I've done is recreated very roughly the dimensions of that view from above. As long as what you've got here in Illustrator in terms of dimensions, so 3000 by 500 there, and as long as that's the as long as that's the same as what you've got here, created a figure of eight, which is going to be the path for the camera. So we're going to grab that shape, grab the path of it, copy, then in After Effects, P for position, and then paste that onto our camera. So that's not the orientation that we want, but it's fine because we can fix that. So what we'll do is create a new null, make that a 3D layer, parent the camera to the null, then R for rotation and minus 90. And then now we can see that figure of eight move. Delete the null. Select the position of the camera, which will select all the keyframes. And then we can just move that up. Still not quite right because the camera is facing down. But if we control Alt O to give us our orientation of the camera, orient along path and OK that. We're so close to getting this where we want it. This is our active camera. And now the last thing is go to orientation. And we set that to zero. Now we have our camera moving through the room. If we press U, the keyframes here are roving keyframes, which means we can just put out the last keyframe to extend the duration. So the speed is entirely up to you. But what we want to do is just make sure it loops seamlessly. So this is one that I've created earlier, so I've already got these comp markers in, but let's just show you that. So drag in a comp marker over to here, and then wherever your last keyframe is, to make sure it's a perfect loop, pull in another one, and then you can press one and two, check. Now what I'm looking at is the active camera view, but then also on top to make sure that's a perfect loop. And if you want to tweak this camera at all, so if you don't want a perfect figure of eight, you can always you can always bring these in, adjust these. But one thing to be careful of, and one thing that I struggled with for a ridiculous amount of time was you may see if you want a really smooth camera move. You want to make sure that these Bezier handles here are set to 
Well, I don't know what it's called, the setting, frankly, but you want to grab your Convert Vertex tool and make sure that it's a perfectly straight line between the two, because otherwise it's going to be really noticeable glitches in the camera move. Before we carry on, I just want to thank those of you who have commented on previous tutorials. I appreciate it and love you all in a totally platonic, non-weird way. Hold on, did I just make it weird? Lastly, I have a Gumroad page where all the projects are free to download. Some have tutorials related to them, but some are just random assets I thought might be useful. You can thank me by, well, I won't even say it. Let's look at the reflection now. What we want to do is replace these panels with graphics or footage or whatever it is you're using. If you download the Gumroad project, I've used looping geometric shape animations that I did a previous tutorial on. So I'm just going to import those that are already made. And just so we can see how our reflections look, I'm going to lock the camera, select all of these panels, and then just grab one of these. That'll do. And then Alt Replace, so hold Alt, and then that'll replace all of those panels with that comp. We're going to switch to one view. Our res is quarter, set that to full. So there's no reflection at the moment. Let's grab this panel here. And let's toggle down to our material options. And we're gonna set the reflection intensity to 30. And then we can see that we've got a reflection now and the sharpness we're going to set to 60 and the roll off to 30. So now we can copy those material options, select all and then paste them. What I might do, just so you can see how that reflection's working, let's maybe replace it with what's this? Yeah, it's nice and simple. So we'll replace again. So this is far from perfect, but depending on what you have in your scene, you might want to play around with the settings, but for this animation, the camera's moving around, you get away with it. So to make it easier when you're tweaking these settings, what I did was set up a master null with expression controls for the reflection values. I'm not gonna go into the step-by-step -step of organizing the expression controls here because I do it in almost all my videos. And you can always refer to the workflow video or ask in the comments. The other thing to bear in mind is what we lose with Cinema 4D Renderer is depth of field. So if we switch to Classic 3D, we also lose Motion Blur, which I had enabled. So let me just turn that off a second. Don't know why Frame Blending is on. I'm going to turn that off. So in Camera Options, we've got Depth of Field. And if we whack these values up, Okay, you'll see, if we switch that back to Cinema 4D, it's gonna ignore that completely. It's also gonna ignore motion blur. That's the trade-off. You get reflections, but you don't get up the field or motion blur. This is the final project that you can find on Gumroad. And what I've done, because After Effects calculating all these reflections can take a while and my computer isn't the fastest, so to spare my sanity, I've just rendered out a JPEG image sequence of the whole thing. For the motion blur, that's 
just a case of adding this pixel motion blur, you can see it's not exactly perfect. So that doesn't look particularly great there, but for the most part, when it's playing, you get away with it. So the only thing you might find is if there's animation on any of these panels, you might get some weird anomalies. The settings I've used is shutter control, manual, shutter angle 180, shutter samples 30, vector detail 15. I've also just dropped the camera down just to bring it closer to the floor, just to give it a little bit more interest variation to do that. Make sure you've got all the position keyframes selected and then you can just drag up or down on the Y. When you've got the camera low down, it enhances the sense of speed as it's moving through, which is um, that's why they have the camera low down on the ground in car chases and films. And you could even tilt the camera up a little bit as well, if you wanted to. So just play around and see what looks good. So now looking at the version of the animation just with clips of Bill Murray films, which he commissioned me to do. Popped around, we had a cup of tea and a chat. Built Proton Packs Blue Peter style out of old washing up liquid bottles. The depth of field, uh, and this is very hacky, not perfect, but could perhaps be improved upon, is I duplicated the main animation sequence. So you've got the same camera moving around. You can always expression control the camera from this to the main animation so you're not changing it twice. What I've done is parented a load of spotlights to the camera so they follow the camera as it's moving around. The idea is to have a sort of variation of the, the luma value. So the closer you are to the camera, the brighter it is. But as you can see here, it's pretty inept. Uh, see if I can find a frame where it works better. No, not particularly. You could probably improve this, tweaking the angles of these, adjusting the settings. But this might be one way to add depth of field. I pre-rendered out this sequence and then in the final comp, you can see I've got the, just the rendered out sequence here. And then this is, so this is using compound blur. We've got our layer here blur mat and you can say that I mean it's just not uh, it's not really fit for purpose but if I solo that it's blurring in the distance like with some some parts of it you can see here this is sort of this is in focus that's out of focus there anyway that was uh, that was trying to get around the depth of field but honestly I don't think this animation needs it or benefits from it it was just me playing around so that's it thanks for watching see you again soon